Welcome to Church of the Covenant. We are a progressive federated church of two denominations, Presbyterian Church USA and United Church of Christ, the Congregational Branch. We have been a federated church since 1932. However, this building, built in the Back Bay of Boston, was built between 1865 and 1867. At the time, the church was called Central Congregational Church. The architect of the building was Richard M. Upjohn, and the architectural style is Gothic Revival, as we can see from the pointy arches and the high ceiling. Since the church is built in the Back Bay, the foundations are held up by 1,100 wooden pilings and reversed arches. When the church was built, the interior was very simple. There was no center aisle, there were none of these beautiful decorations, and the windows were simple grisé windows, which are painted. But then, in 1893, everything changed. What happened? Follow me. In 1893, the church called a new pastor, Dr. Edward Lord Clark, and he was given the job of figuring out how to redecorate the sanctuary. According to the story, Dr. Clark went to the Columbian Exposition, the World's Fair, in Chicago in 1893. There he saw this beautiful Tiffany lantern with bronze filigree and lots of art glass. He fell in love with the lantern and convinced a younger member of the church to buy it and donate it. Once the church had the lantern, Dr. Clark convinced the congregation to undertake the complete redecoration of the sanctuary by Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company in conjunction with local craftspeople. Speaking of which, these pews, the beautiful woodwork in the chancel, the wainscoting across the walls, the pulpit, the choir stalls, all of this was done by the local craftspeople, among them Irving and Casson, fine cabinet makers. All the wood was changed to quarter sawn golden oak. In addition, Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company put in many resplendent mosaics in the chancel area, at the foot of the chancel and behind the communion table. Furthermore, we have beautiful stained glass windows from Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company. Let's go look at those next. So now we're at the south side of the church where we see the four women of the Bible. These beautiful windows feature four women, little known in the Bible, that reflect the progressive nature of our church even back in the 1800s. There are many features in these windows that are indicative of Tiffany stained glass, such as layers of glass to create the effect of the robes. This is known as drapery glass. Also, except for the hands and the faces, there's no painting on glass. So how did Tiffany get these wonderful colors? Well, when the glass was molten, it was infused with metal oxides. Different metals gave you different colors. Iron gave you green, cobalt gave you blue, manganese gave you purple, and then, as I said, the glass was swirled together to create the effects of the robes without using a lot of lead lines, and there were multiple layers of glass put together to get the gradual shading of different things like scarves and veils. In addition, we should mention that we have 20 single pane windows known as Claris in the clerestory, which is way up there. Those are the clerestory windows. The glass used to make those windows is called iridescent glass. It's a kind of blown glass and it reflects in the sunlight in many interesting ways. So when the sun comes through, the glass can almost look like it's a different color. Another notable feature is again on the south wall, up above the four women of the Bible, we have windows of the church as the bride of Christ or Mary and the ascension of Jesus. 
These windows are notable because there are so many small pieces of glass held together. They're held together with copper wire and muric acid, which is attached to the lead canes. So they're really complicated and magnificent works of art. There's so many other things to see in the church. There's our beautiful canestone baptismal font, our welty trip organ. I hope at some point you all can come and visit us. It's really worth seeing this magnificent sanctuary. And as you do get a chance to visit us here at 67 Newbury Street in Boston, there's a few important things we want you to know. We recognize fully that this gift of a sanctuary was built during a historical and cultural time in which Eurocentric worldviews were lifted higher than others. We recognize this as a problem. There were very few white people in the Bible. Brown-skinned Jesus walked this earth into the beauty and diversity that God holds for all of humanity. Therefore, we as a congregation are committed to diversifying the interior of this space, reimagining it with icons and imagery that speak of the wild diversity and the more historical truth to God's story here on earth. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for listening and watching. We invite you to be further partners in supporting the work of this historic space space that is on loan to us as you go forward into this world. May peace be with you.